All right. We're back with another episode. First, the sponsors. Head over to www.johnbartoloshow.com. Go check out a complete list of the sponsors there. I want to thank a few of them now. Right on Optics, Enforce Weapon Lights, Pulsar Thermal Imaging Technology, Rhino Metals, Gallo Technology, Galco Leather Holsters, of course, Volquartz and Firearms. Shout out to Scott Volquartz and go check out his podcast. He's got a good one. Shout out to Brady too. Right on. Go check out his podcast. I'm excited about what those guys are doing. Special thanks to them. I want to give a special shout out as well, of course, to all of you. Thank you for tuning in, supporting. Please like and subscribe. Do everything you can to support the show, guys. Appreciate you guys. There's a complete list of the sponsors on the website and on the trailer on the way in. Remember to check it out. Thank you. Got a special guest today I'm excited about. This guy uh, comes with a, a lot of endorsements. Uh, he's, he's a farmer. He's a farmer. And that's what he says. I'm a farmer. That's the shtick. We got the one and only Logan Hanks. Man, I appreciate you having me on, John. It's, it's an honor. I appreciate you coming out. I appreciate you leaving the farm. It it was it took some doing for me. I tell you, I was I, like I told you, I was nervous as hell. This is a good. You're in good hands. This is a good place for you. Yeah, you you come with high recommendations. I appreciate that. I don't know why, but I appreciate that. <laughs> now, I want to I want to dive. There's some things I'm interested in. I want to get into with you. That's probably not what you expected, but I want to get into it. Talk to me about food. Oh man. Talk to me about farming. Talk to me about some Monsanto. Talk to me about what we're poisoning ourselves with. Because I just had the health guy on, Dr. Kyle Gillette, and yeah. we talked about how to live for 150 years, body optimization, all those things. And I asked him, I said, how bad is the shit that we put into our body? And I want to get into some of that with you because you're down in the dirt and you know some things. Talk to me about the type of farming you do and how it affects us. Do you watch Yellowstone? I have, yeah. They've actually uh, really kind of surprised me here lately. Not not necessarily surprised me, but I guess made me proud. Because okay. They they brought up. They just had a vegan protest on the show. Yes, I saw that. Yeah. yeah I'm dropping a little spoiler, I guess. Spoiler here. alert. But uh, the chick is protesting the vegan, like because they're killing cows, and uh, we've raised cattle and we row crop. And I guess I should say in West Tennessee. Mm -hmm. So in there, John Dutton, he goes up to her and he's like, you're going to, you're protesting whatever you eat, something died to get it. Right. And that's the thing. Like I can tell you, man, from the combine, I'm in a, I just got done being in a combine for a couple months straight. That was my like dungeon when harvest is going. And it's no telling how many rabbits. Right field rats and all these other things that die in the process and i liked it because he says in there how cute does it have to be before you care and that's kind of the way i look at it with the vegan thing but man the biggest thing with i guess our food there's this big push now with the non-gmo mm. all organic and it's a bunch of bullshit it is pretty much um organic i'll tell you kind of a lot of people may not know organic gets chemical sprayed on it. It's organically certified, <laughs> but its chemicals still get sprayed on it. It's not a non. Now they're not spraying Roundup. You know, Roundup's become like the the boogeyman of the the world, pretty much. But there's a way that we look at it. It's like if you want us to go all organic, all non-GMO then you got to also be okay with a ton of people starving to death. Right. It's so crazy to me because everybody now, right? I, I actually watch another show. I do watch Yellowstone, but Yellowstone's gone too far. <laughs> it's like there's no investigations. People just get murdered. Now buildings are being blown yeah. up. They lost me. It turned into Dallas. It has gone pretty hard. It's gone pretty hardcore. Now, is it good entertainment? Sure. Is that cowboy? And no. Okay. I'm, I'm going to tell you <laughs> yeah. right now. It's not what it, it, but that doesn't knock the show. The show's a great show. Now, what I find interesting about all this stuff, I watch a show sometimes called uh, Below Deck. And on it, one of the chefs one time goes, how can you be gluten-free, this free, that free, all these different, like, what do you eat? Yeah. And I think there's a rise in the culture to just in the American culture to just be a thing. And it oh, yeah. becomes what we call a marketing ploy. 
That's what it becomes. Yep. Okay, all natural, all this. It's not completely full of shit, but it's completely full of shit if you catch my drift. Yeah. Are there healthier foods that produce? I think we all can agree, yes. There are healthier production methods of food. And there's a spectrum, right? Good and bad. Yeah. But for the majority, I think you're right. I think it's a bunch of bullshit. And I think that there's there's a lot of marketing baked into it. I think that's a well, safe statement, right? Yeah, they, they killed it in marketing on the non-GMO. Okay. Like that's, I mean, they're they're doing a hell of a job on that aspect. You see the little, what is it? The little butterfly that's on there that means non-GMO. And they'll put it on everything. Like there's toilet paper, I think I've seen before that says like non-GMO. Um, oranges, they they put it on stuff that there's actually not a GMO crop available. They'll just put that stamp on there, and people think that's the way they got to do it. Right. I've heard of people like buying diapers that were non-GMO, like organic. And dude, I'm telling you, that's that is 100% marketing. Yeah, they've done a great job. I, I would agree. Them. I would agree. Now, take me through the process of how you've seen people not understand food and not understand what's really in it and when people ask you and explain i try to explain on the spectrum of things guys if you're going through a drive through you're gonna die and <laughs> explain to me what that is people are eating when they go through for example the average drive through oh man well that's just you know all you're eating is processed crap and that is that's funny you kind of bring that up because that's the i guarantee you some of these people that are blasting us for using roundup probably go to mcdonald's right right I mean, they're eating pure trash uh all this processed junk and i mean they've done studies and and typically your non-gmo people they're going to be your greener crowd sure and uh gmo has actually made things very green from a farming standpoint we we don't have to go over the ground as much we can use less herbicide and pesticide because we've got like sweet corn for instance that is uh, BT earworm or whatever resistant. Mm. I don't have to spray a pesticide over it at all. Like it's just it's bred in there. It's not harmful. There's been tons of studies on this stuff. It's it's not harming you to eat GMO. But yeah, man, it's I mean, and I'm I'm kind of seeing a little resurgence of. I think Corona brought out people. They went to the grocery store. There was nothing at the grocery store. Sure. So now they're actually, I mean, I've had a ton of people reach out to me wanting me to start growing vegetables, want me to start doing this, and they want to know where it's coming from, and the hell they just want to know that they can get some. Mm. Makes sense. It yep. makes sense. I get it. Now, it's really interesting to me because I have a lot of theories, and some of them lead up to conspiracies. I like the chemical, conspiracies. yeah, the chemicals that they're putting in this stuff, is it making us more docile? Do you have any? Do you have any understanding of what they're putting in our body? So let's put it that way. Man, ah, I, I would be just strictly guessing. I mean, I, I think we have all gotten softer. Have you uh, been in any meetings with the Illuminati? I, unofficially, I cannot say. I, I can't say on record. <laughs> but it is it is crazy that uh, you know I, I I watch these like they like. Teflon, for example, things that have come into the marketplace, chemicals, things that are involved in the process of cooking yeah. and eating. And I think not enough people really analyze that. They put stuff, the government and these organizations and these groups, and we'll get into the WHO and all that. And But at the food level, they're putting things in the food because they expect us to die. Yeah. Right? And a lot of times disease and everything else is a foregone conclusion. I just wonder why it has to operate that way. That's what I don't understand. Man, I think with anything, and I don't know how it would tie back in, but it's greed. Um, greed is like poisoned. You know, growing up, I mean, I grew up. No, I think it ties in perfectly. I think you're right. Yeah, I mean, and, and you know, like when I was growing up, I, uh, I grew up in a farming family. I always had this idea that farming was this strong backbone, integrity, group and there are guys like that but there are also some just terrible wretched <laughs> yes i mean with everything you got bad apples and they're definitely in farming and there's a ton of money in food like obviously. for sure so the cheaper you can make food the obviously the more you can turn around your profit um man it's just it's a weird place we're in where there's so much information out there that like 
you could Google why is GMO bad for mm. me? You're going to find 10 results. You could Google why, or probably 100 results. You could Google why is non-GMO bad for me? And, you know, you're going to find something 100%. to verify. So it's, it just it goes all over the place. But I think a lot of it, there's, there's a money issue going on. Somebody's found a way to make more money with a cheaper input. And that's, I think that's what's going on. Now, I've heard a lot about the chickens, okay? I watched a lot of documentaries on chickens, okay? Is it they grab one of these issues, whether it's Monsanto or chickens, and they do these, these huge news reports, and they do these deep... Do they get it right in most of them? And are there processes of the there parts of the process that they have to clean up? Man, I I have twelve chickens, actually eleven chickens, so that's about my expertise on chickens. But I, I think they hype everything up, sensationalize yeah, it. Man, you know, nobody wants to. It's not going to grab somebody like a a regular headline. Um, now the chickens, chickens and cattle both get blasted. One of you see all the time this antibiotic free or hormone free, right? Um, man, uh, there's there's people doing antibiotic free, and I mean, somebody probably get mad at me for making this comment, but like uh, giving them antibiotics when you <laughs> eat them, you're not eating the antibiotics. They have to be out of their system by the time they go to market. Like it has, there's a certain time frame that they've come up with. The cattle association, all of them have worked together and they've they've studied it and been like, all right, it's out of their system. So, like, really, if a cow is sick, they get sick. Cows get sick, they get pink <laughs> eyes. Stuff happens to them, just like me and you. If you don't give them antibiotic, there's a good chance they're just going to die. Right. And I mean, I don't know. You know, some of these people that are so against it, they might would rather them just die out there of a sickness so we overanalyze the process way too much the regular person overanalyzes it too much so when you go into the store you go into the 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 food counter and you order whatever whether it's a piece of meat or it's a piece of piece of uh grain anything that you're ordering that that you're consuming yeah uh i think we overanalyze the process i don't think that's a crazy statement to make i think i think a lot of people sensationalize it and i think they look for reasons i mean people have to take a long look at how food is produced the waste that's involved in food yeah and 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 those types of things and i don't think that they're willing to do that because if they did it was a very it would be like you alluded to in yellowstone a very uncomfortable conversation yeah well and okay i eat i mean i eat food from the grocery store um i eat vegetables from the grocery how dare store. you <laughs> yeah like you know if if i really thought the stuff that we were doing was like poisoning us I, there ain't a chance I'd eat it. Right. Like, like I'm eating it myself. And I mean, hell, I, I slaughter one of my bulls or something every year. I get a half or a quarter of beef, split it usually with some family. I mean, I'm eating it. These And the ones I'm eating have been, they've had antibiotics. They've had hormones. It's uh, funny how the left, you know, wants to demonize food, right? They yeah. want to come after food. Why is that, you think? Why are they going after beef? Why are they going after cattle? Why are they going after, our, uh, you know, uh, what we put in our body? Why is that so important to them? And I'm not talking about COVID to everybody listening. We're going to get to that. We'll get, I'm sure we'll get there. But why is that so important? Well, that's, uh, man, I would ask you the same. Like, I've wondered. I've tried to figure out who. I want to know who's pulling the, the purse strings because it's, it all has to tie back to money. That's what I. That's the only. Well, I have thing. theories. They're just theories. Well, I want to hear them. What's the theory? Well, you can ask me on your show. All right, I'll do. No, that. no, I'll, I'll say. <laughs> no, I'll say. I'll say some of the theories. I mean, one of them in particular, I, I, I believe, Logan. I, I, I think that there's a movement to continue to make the population, the populace, more docile. As they continue to make the populace more docile, they can control them a lot better. Yeah. We've known that for years via toothpaste, deodorant, and certain other items that we use in our day to day basis. We certain we don't accept it, but we kind of know it, you know, and at the end of the day, yes, some of the additives make products better, but there's no question. I mean, you brought it up yourself. They, they like us. Most governments like a society that's addicted to TV, that's addicted to bad food, yeah. that's dependent on them yeah. because that's where the power comes from. That's where I'm at with my, I don't well, know if that's a, even a conspiracy. I think that's pretty much fact. Yeah. I was going to say that's pretty solid. I mean, and you see the, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm happy that they exist, I guess, but the old soy boys that uh, drink their almond milk and uh, all that, the soy milk. And have you ever tried that stuff? It's terrible. Um, I've had 
I've had almond milk. I've had almond milk. And the only reason I've had I've had some non-dairy products is as guys, as you know, we get older, dairy's kind of not our friend. And if you're a real dude, probably by 40, if you're still eating a lot of dairy, you're a lucky, lucky, lucky man. I can promise you that. And I think you know what I'm talking about because you're running for the <laughs> shitter every five minutes. Yeah. It's just the way our bodies work. We start yeah. to piss it out and shit it out. Well, that's what I, but I, I mean, obviously, like I said, it, I'm glad they exist because it's a customer base for my yeah. soybeans, but- I think they've done studies, and I'm pretty sure it lowers testosterone, like the, sure. the soy milk. And um, I don't all- mind almond milk, for the record. I don't. I don't mind it. Like if I'm somewhere and and that's the alt, and plus it lasts longer. And I'm a cereal junkie, so I might have a bottle of it from time to time. See, I'm I'm like my my old farming. I guess the way I'm, I was raised, it's like blasphemy. Yeah. If I do that, like my dad is he's sixty something, and he's still chugging some milk yeah i wouldn't say i seek it out but i would say almond milk is my line yeah like everyone has a line i would say it's my like yeah you know because it lasts long okay i can have my fr- frosted flakes but i'm not doing it thinking like hey i'm saving the universe yeah, <laughs> yeah. well i saw a question on there that Shoot. I, um i see somebody asked if it's true is the government for asking farmers to destroy their crops and if they didn't they would not get subsidies that has been something that I've been asked a ton this year. Sure. Um, and it is not true. It was uh, apparently some farmer on TikTok, I think, did it to be funny. Started like this joke because he's like, I'm out here cutting these this wheat right. field. I had to kill it. Well, it was just ready to be harvested. It right. wasn't actually. And uh, we don't get a lot of subsidies anymore. Like, I think that's a big misconception with farmers. They think we're like living on welfare from the <laughs> government. And, uh, man, I mean, I'm a relatively smaller farmer. I mean, it, that's my job. I do it. I work enough to be full-time, but I'm not – I ain't lying in my pockets with the government. Sure. Money. But there was never anybody being paid to destroy the crops. Sure. What crops do you primarily harvest? Man, I am a pretty much corn, soybeans, and occasionally wheat um obviously it depends on the market this coming year is going to be probably the wildest season that i've ever been a part of this will be my eighth season kind of doing it on my own and uh fertilizer prices under good old good old uncle joe man it's uh fertilizer price is going to be about triple the price (laughs) uncle joe (laughs) yeah joey basement joey basement he's down in the basement. basement man that's it yeah joey basement well, it's, uh, yeah, we're looking at probably, and that's something, man, that's been pretty cool to tell people is uh, the cost of farming. Um, <laughs> it's cheap. It's so cheap, man. Yeah, <laughs> it's so, it's so cheap. cheap. Um, just grow some. Yeah, just, and well, what did Bloomberg said, all you got to do is stick a seed in the ground. You know, it's nothing to it. But it's, um, it's like when people tell me they want to start a podcast. I'm like, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, I know. They I need love to come it. look yeah. around yeah. and see how easy it is. Yeah, the competition's not high or anything. Yeah. Yeah, um, but no, man, like corn, normal year. Again, these are West Tennessee figures. It's going to vary from around to around. I mean, I don't know. Some people may care to hear this, but um, corn is usually pretty expensive to plant. Per acre, you're looking at around, not including rent, $350 an acre. That's not your rent. Like you might pay $100, $150, $200 an acre rent. This coming year, I mean, on a normal year, just fertilizer would be $150 an acre on corn. We might see it $450 an acre on corn this coming year. Wow. So, I mean, it's – I just tell people already, I'm like, man, I'm just I'm just along for the ride of 2022 right now. Wow. That's, that's crazy. And plus the cost of fuel, everything else baked into that, especially now, it's got to be insane. Yeah, it is. And, you know, I don't want to sound like – no, 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 but it's the reality of the situation. Yeah, yeah, and I don't want people to think like that, man, farmers think they just got it worse than everybody. Because, I'm, man, I've, I've got quite a few buddies that are self-employed. And, man, you know, if you're in the, well, like, you know, Sornex, I see over there, they held their steel, all that stuff's getting hard. Through the roof. So we're in a really weird, weird time. And uh, farmers, we kind of, I feel like we're either loved or hated. Um I remember when Trump won, because farmers, I think like 90% or 95% of us 
voted for Trump. Right. And Which is crazy because they used to be all in the bag for Jimmy Carter. He was a farmer himself. A lot of the old like farmers were Southern Democrats, man. Yeah. That's what they called them. And, and there's still a few... Sharecroppers. Yeah, man. It, there's still a few lingering around. and I mean, and if you ask them to list their values, like, are you for this? No. Are you for this? No, no, no. They're, they're as conservative as a person could be. Of course. But... Their daddy voted Democrat, and by God, they're going to vote Democrat. It's crazy. It's wild. It's wild. <laughs> it is. It's wild. It really is. That blind loyalty is wild. It drives me crazy. Mm. Like, I, if you're going to be voting left, at least actually believe in the values of left. Oh, Logan, that's not going to happen. Come on, you know better. <laughs> now, it's very interesting, the, the topic of agriculture – hasn't really been something that i feel like democrats are scared to touch certain issues right now they're staying in what they know which is the discord the riots the covid they're staying in a very safe box if you notice they really haven't got into the second amendment stuff in this administration i've noticed that you know have you noticed that and a lot of that has to do with they don't know who the new gun owners are now one of the things i've advocated to the gun industry at length is that they have to start to understand the new gun owner and they've overly politicized gun ownership it's fucking insanely politicized right yeah so so now a democrat can't be caught dead even holding a gun because they'll eat shit for it these are dangerous times and i think that's dangerous association i wish that some of the 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 folks would understand overly politicizing these things it can create problems because that's there's no way to bring anybody together because they're not willing to talk about it that's part of the reason why i started this podcast was because i just wanted people to feel like they could come in and talk and yeah there's guns on the wall there's guns around but we all just want to be more capable in the things that we're doing and we want to be better. Yeah. And, and I, I want people that want that. And if you happen to be a Democrat or Republican, then so be it. Yeah. That's how I see it. Yeah. No, I, I'm with you, man. And that's where I can't remember if it was a year ago. One of them, it, it, I think Trump might've still been in office and he, he said something and there was a Democrat, one of the politicians, she actually clapped. She stood up and was clapping. It's it probably Tulsi Gabbard. No, but Tulsi, she's, I, if any of them have any sense, she's like got to be the only one. Yeah, I'm trying, she's trying to get out here. We're trying to get it done. But yeah, she'd be a great one. She's She she gets it. I, You know, I said it selfishly. And, and look, I mean, people know I'm, I'm, I'm friends with the, with the former first family. I'm friendly with some of them. I, I, uh, I would have loved to see a Trump Tulsi ticket. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm man enough to say, I think we all yeah. would have loved to see a Trump Tulsi ticket. I think there's something there. And I think that's a way to bring the aisles together. Will it happen? Probably not for a number of reasons. I mean, you know, she brings Florida, but that's, I mean, uh, Hawaii, but that's still a very small, yeah. you know, snapshot. I'd be interested to hear her thoughts on it if she makes it in and, and, and how she thinks she can expand it. But I think she has to start reaching across some of these different aisles. And she has been and continue to grow that. But, you know, I, I don't know how exactly it'll play out in terms of who would run with them but yeah. we, we all can agree that's an interesting topic now because kamala is a hot disaster oh man yeah she was i i don't know anybody that i don't know how anybody could like that woman in general man she just seems like i mean she's about as unlikable as hillary clinton to me Oof. i mean and, and clinton it's she's, a tall order they're yeah they're like <laughs> the cockroaches of the united states they just keep coming back and and I mean, we've seen how she sucked the life out of Bill. Like I love that old meme where he looks like he's like his eyes are hollow, and and it's like <laughs> this is what Hillary does to people. But Tulsi is uh, she's too moderate for Democrats. Mm. Um, that's the problem with her. Now I I don't know her gun stance. I'm not sure where she falls on that. Uh, she's been she's been interesting. It's it's uh, she's said some things. She's acquiesced to some things. So. I, I would say that I'd have to see her run again because I would believe that that topic or that particular stance would be under construction. Yeah. You know, I think she's looking at that and I think going and spending time with Jocko, which I know she has and spending time even with Joe and doing yeah. his show a couple of times. I think she's starting to expand her breadth of knowledge from the street. And you only can do that when you step away from politics and you come back. Yeah. She's now stepped away. So she's having that clarity of being able to go around and meet with people and talk to them. I'm going to tell you right now, if you're an anti, if you're, uh, 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 what's his face down in Texas, uh, whatever his name is, Not that Beto, Beto, Ugh. 
I don't even like calling him that, whatever his name is, O'Rourke. Beta. O'Rourke. Beta is a pretty good one. For yeah, me. if you're a Beto O'Rourke <laughs> and you're going around and that's the drum you're banging, well, you just alienated 20 million something new gun owners yeah. over the last X amount of, of time, you know, and, and we all can debate the number. There's a lot of numbers tossed around because some of them are second purchases and third purchases and so on, but there's been a lot of purchases. We know that. Yeah. And ammunition. So I think anybody who wants to win a seat needs to re examine their, their, their stance on that. I agree, man. And it is funny. I had actually not thought a lot about it, but you're not hearing much on the Second Amendment. Uh, yeah. They have pretty their, well Their stayed. nominee failed. Yeah. Chipman failed. And now they're floundering because they're, they don't... The reason they're not doing anything on it is because they don't have data. Yeah. I'll tell you that right now. I know from yeah. talking to some of the people that are handlers around some of these guys, they just don't have enough data who the voters are and who they are. Yeah, which makes sense. I mean, it's... It was... What was it like? It was a tremendous amount of new gun owners with COVID and all these times. And you can't tell me some of them weren't Democrats. Of course they were. I, mean, I know that they were. Yeah. Like I, that's, I think Scott and I had talked about that. People would call him. They were yeah. like adamantly left. Typically yep. would have been anti-gunners. And now they were going that way. And you mentioned earlier, they've, they kind of don't know what to do with farmers. And I think that there's... It's a funny thing they kind of do with farmers where I think a lot of the Democrats hate us because we were so overwhelmingly, I mean, we're just conservative. That's right. just the way we are. Um, most of us are probably rural towns. It's your typical conservative values. Well, I think you've all given so much land taxes everything time money effort that i think you just don't want to see the 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 needle moved against too much more <laughs> so you're trying to hold the line and i can understand that and that that makes a lot of sense to me uh how how far away are we from total automation and farming we're seeing some tractors now like you may have seen the floating around on the internet of where it, it doesn't even have a cab it's mm -hmm. like all gps i mean i've run gps on my my planter and my combine and sprayers all GPS. Now, you still have to turn around at the end of the row, so you can't just go to sleep in the tractor. And, right. Because you know, there's guys that have fallen asleep and they run into a tree with a combine or something. <laughs> Luckily, nobody's ever done that on our operation. But um, I don't think it's too far out. And one of the things that I worry about is we got guys like Bill Gates. He's buying a ton of farmland. Ooh. Have you seen any, he's like Oh, I know largest, all about it. I, I want to hear it from you. Well, he is, uh, I think he's the largest farmland owner now. And he's also really huge into the fake meat. That's why I've, I've thought about, man, what is the, what is the goal here? Um, and I've heard some pretty wild conspiracies. Some of them think like they want to dominate the food so that they can pretty much have everybody under them. And I mean, hey, maybe it is, you know, I've heard of the New World Order stuff. Some people think I'm really busting out a tinfoil hat, but no. What hey, do you think, man? I, I don't know. It's uh, it makes sense because mm -hmm. um, you control the the farmland, and and there's the big, huge commercial operations. They're they're crushing most of the small guys. I mean, that's that's kind of been my axe to grind. Is I'm trying to, I'm kind of trying to take on the the giants, I guess, to an extent. And if I can make a farm pencil out, I'm buying it. Like I'm. At 30 years old, I own about 500 acres. It's not a ton, but it's mo more than most 30-year-olds. Right. And I'm I'm doing that to try to because if I buy it, then I can stronghold and be like, now, nah, you know. What do you need to get to what you would consider a stronghold? 100 acres, 500 acres. What What do you think you need to compete? Oh man, that's uh, I actually want to own about 1,500. That's okay. probably my my goal. Um. I mean, there's guys in my area that farm. There's one that farms close to 30,000 acres mm -hmm. and uh, crushing crushing the the other guys. Yeah. Because, like, a guy like me or another, a smaller farmer, you come in, and a, I got to keep adding this caveat in case somebody else, I don't know how many farmers tune in, but you probably I'm have sure after this there'll be a few. That, um, they're going to be saying, man, rent price is so much higher here. Normal rent in our area, decent ground, hundred to hundred and fifty right. bucks an acre. There these big guys, they they do pull some subsidies and I'll drop a a real bad thing on these guys. <laughs> um, there's caps on what you can get on the, the amount. I mm -hmm. think uh, 
two years ago it was a hundred and twenty five thousand dollar cap now you had to qualify per acre this is how much you could get from the government like an operation like mine i didn't get anywhere close to that maybe like 15 to 20 grand mm -hmm. these big guys they set up multiple tax entities and like i said man i'm i'm gonna i'm kicking an anthill um but they have multiple tax entities they'll max out the the cap on that one and then they draw the payment on the next one max out that cap and they keep drawing it until they've used all these tax entities so the cap might be one hundred and twenty five thousand, but they're drawing a million because they have nine. Yeah, that's not but that's not shocking to me. You know, and I don't I don't think that's, a, you know, a big thing to say for a couple reasons. We saw everybody do it during covid. Every business did, did it during covid. There were a lot of bit. Listen. I could be shut down for this. A lot of businesses were were filching the COVID. They were COVID profiteers. Yeah. Let me put it that way. Yeah. Just like there's war profiteers, there was COVID profiteers. And there were brands and companies that took in a lot of dough, okay, and COVID subsidies and, and now are leveraging the COVID virus to even let go of people. So there are oh, yeah. bad actors. Yeah in that space and they're using it as an excuse they're using it as a way to clean house uh somebody mentioned a great reset underneath and i know what you're referring to but this could be almost like a mini reset where yeah. they can kind of reboot the books on some things and they're using that money and that subsidy as a way to kind of backdoor build up other things that they're trying to do listen if a company shrewd with its taxes or good with its the way it does things I can't fault them completely for that, but is it above board? That's the million dollar yeah. question. There is a gray area. Yeah. Okay. There is a gray area. There's a fine line. Yeah. Hey, you know, I had to file for a subsidy or, or a reimbursement for this and I had to do it for this because for this reason. And, and I get that. Yeah. But if it's not above board and you can't justify it, that's where I think the corruption and it starts to overflow. Yeah. Now, how do you fix it though? Oh uh, man, I, I have, I've thought a lot on that because Man, it's where it, it makes it insanely hard for a normal family operation. Family operations are, they're dying. Uh, the average age of a farmer now is 60. Like it's been going up. It was 57 like two years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's up to 60, maybe even 61 now um, because young people can't get in. They just can't get into the game. And you get these big corporate, or they're, they're a corporation at that point when they're working. 15,000 to 30,000 acres and they draw these huge subsidies and then they can pay whereas I said a normal guy might pay 100 to 150 dollars an acre they're paying 200 mm. to, to some of them 300 dollars an acre and they can ride it they can move their finances around to make it justify and uh, they're keeping other people from being able to work the ground and get into the game now how do you fix that man I have Honestly, it's uh, <laughs> the unfortunate answer would be uh, people got to just stop. It's going to take the landowners to stop renting the ground to these other guys, mm -hmm. which means they're going to have to turn down two hundred plus dollars an acre and take a hundred and something dollars an acre. That's going to be really hard to get people to do because they just they want, they want more the money. money. They want the money. Now you brought up Bill Gates. That's a good one to bring up. I mean, he's. He, he, he's as filthy as they come. He's got the fingerprints and the earmarks of so many different things. Yeah. I could say a lot of tinfoil hat things. I'm not gonna. I think he, this is gonna sound a little tinfoil hat, guys. It's not. I've read a lot of stuff on Bill Gates. I'm starting to think he was brought on by the Clinton administration and he is an operative no different than George Soros or any of these bad actors that are floating around that scene, especially remnants of the old um, Clinton administration. Yeah. And you can see that through the alignments of the foundations. So there are some facts that back this up. The Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation walks almost in lockstep with everything that the Clinton Foundation does in terms of what they invest in, what they do, things they subsidize, stuff they support. Yeah. Uh, so there is there's some movement there of those two, and there's some alignment. I'm not even going to get into the fucking Epstein thing <laughs> and everything else and the wife divorcing him. 
I think he is a very dangerous person yeah. who's been given a lot of power. And my hope was that this Epstein thing with Galen Maxwell is going to reset some of that. And some of these people are going to turn the page. But CNN, MSNBC, some of these different orgs that pump out the news that's blared in airports, they are just fucking in the bag for these people like well, last love, night yeah, yeah there last night I, I somebody sent me a clip because i'm because i'm traveling around I'm on the road a lot so people send me stuff and i try to catch up on stuff but i saw a clip of don lemon uh, praising gas prices praising gas prices yeah. and people watch it and believe it <laughs> yeah. i mean they believe it and i think and i've said this logan what I think is going to save it is two things. One, midterm elections are huge. You know, like you said, if you want change, you have to you have to begin to move towards change. But I also think what's going to change it, and I think in some ways this is coming. Uh, I I think the the idea of making fun of this administration because it is so fucked up. I mean, I heard Kamala and Biden won't even talk to each other. It is so fucked up. I think that's going to become the story because yeah. I think it's too good of a story. Yeah. It doesn't matter who you are. Yeah. They walk by each other. They don't talk. Everything is very staged. She didn't want the job. I said it since day one on this show. She did not want the job. They wanted Michelle Obama, but they went with her. Nobody else wanted it. And you saw he was he bought that candidacy because he went out and yep. he put everybody who ran against him in his administration. Yeah. So everything was a back alley deal throughout that entire administration. Which, what does it say about... Um, a Something that I've said is a dying thing in this country, and this is, again, I guess I hearken back to my kind of my roots. But uh, where is integrity in the country? Like, the, and again, this to some people this sounds like an old school thing, I guess. But um, <laughs> then people, I remember the same people that were up there blasting Biden. They'd be calling him out on like, man, this, 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 these are things you did. And the minute that he gets put down in there they're praising biden and they're just kissing his feet man to get on his team and that's where i'm like where is the integrity is that is it completely gone is there no more integrity well it's not about integrity you wish it was i wish it was it's about power okay all these people have money yeah okay I've said it a hundred times. No one should be voting for Nancy Pelosi. She's a hundred. I mean, enough is enough, <laughs> but no one should be voting for Maxine Waters. She's crazy. Yeah. I mean, she's absolutely crazy. She is. If any of those things that those people say or do or anything Biden says or does happened 15 years ago, they would have run him out of town. Yeah. He was considered unelectable as president for the longest time because of remarks that he had made throughout his career. But the power of media to change the narrative and to change the way you view someone and to look through the lens and literally uh, take the puzzle and flip it on its head and then spit it back out to you and people swallow it and eat it up. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of things in politics I, I don't agree with. Uh, I've never found a way to give a solution to voter intelligence. I've never found a way to do that. Yeah. I don't know... Uh, uh, how, but Biden somehow managed to get more votes than any Democrat that's ever walked the planet. Okay. Yeah. Okay. If you want me to believe that, then fine. But I think that CNN and I think that MSN, I, this is just my assumption if I was answering it. I think they're in trouble and I think they need ratings and I think they have to stay relevant because yeah. no one's subscribing to that unless the government gives a subsidy to it. Yeah. And that's terrifying. If they start subsidizing news media, outlets, yeah. that's when we're in fucking deep trouble. But I do think if we get the House back in the Senate, there's two things that have to happen almost immediately. You have to put in some type of uh, uh, um, publishing law, yeah. and you have to put in reciprocity for... You have to make the concealed carry permit like a driver's license. And I think you absolutely have to start going after some of these social media outlets. I, I know there are people that disagree with me, even to an extent, high, high level people. But I think everybody should be validated. I went on that rumble. I went on 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 parlor. It was the same people that they promote and push. Mm. The problem is we continuously keep creating our own echo chambers. And when we continuously keep creating our own echo chambers, that's a problem. Yeah. Well, and people, I think that's why a lot of people get away from reality because we're so, one, we surround ourselves with only what we want to hear the whole time. And that's that's kind of the, the crazy thing with the left, like these people that are super loud and outspoken on the left side, 
they think like like I'm a country bumpkin uh, to these people. You know, like I'm just <laughs> I'm a dumb redneck. But don't sell yourself short, dude. Well, that's that's saying that's what these people think. Like in the in the the loudest voices are typically not always, you know, the normal. Well, social media was supposed to Logan and things like the podcast and everything else was supposed to correct some of that. Like that was supposed to be the place we could go always because of the First Amendment, right? Yeah. Free speech. And I agree with that. Do I think some people put some really dumb shit out there on social media that's outrageous that has to be fact checked? Absolutely. Yeah. But you can't have fact checkers that are in the bag for one side or the other. Yeah. I have seen people on both sides post things that you're like, what the fuck are you talking about? Yeah. Is it your right to do it? Sure. Is it your right to be stupid? Yes. Is yeah. it your right to be a, a moron? Yes. Is it your right to say whatever you want? Yes. Well, and I think you are seeing a little bit of it from the I think podcasts have rattled the cages pretty good because Don you brought up Don Lemon he's got to be one of the dumbest dudes I've ever seen he's got a sexual allegation a legitimate one and where is you see nothing hardly about that like it's it's not that should be huge stuff and the man reached in his pants and fondled himself (laughs) and then supposedly had another man sniff it I asked the question who makes a story like that up (laughs) yeah yeah, I mean, the dude told that. Yeah, like... Like, no dude... Wa- no self-respecting dude ever wants to say that that <laughs> happened. And I read the... Tra- and I'm like, this sounds totally plausible. Yeah. I could see Don being, like, an arrogant dude to think... Of course. That. But I, that's one of the things I've loved. Him, he's trying to go after Joe. And Joe blasted him the other day and was like, I have ten times yeah. the audience that you guys do. Like, that CNN has as a whole... And he, because he was like, you, I mean, he called him a dumb, you know, whatever, went off on him. And it's like, but CNN, I feel like there's part of them, they're seeing the changing tide. Sure. But then you still got the others that think like, well, we still, we're CNN, man. We can still say what we want to say, do what we want to do with no repercussion. Well, there's, there's a lot of it rampant through the executive structure through middle management all throughout the company. And I think we see the fingerprints of that, you know? Yeah. Uh, I think people have to understand fake media controlling of media goes all the way back to be even before the Kennedy administration. If you go look at a lot of the stuff that's starting to come out about the Kennedy assassination, a lot of different things that have, that are starting to become public files. And if you had a chance to check out the documentary that Oliver Stone did, he, he pulls some of that out yeah. and you can see the fingerprints of, of everything. Like I said before, and I'm not, this isn't about conspiracy theories or the Kennedy assassination, but if you believe one bullet did all that stuff, you, you are literally smoking the evidence. <laughs> I mean, you're, you're insane. And, yeah. and I think you're more insane if you believe that. And it, it's the same kind of thing with, with alien technology and other things like that. Uh, of course, we're not alone in this universe. If we believe in God and we believe in, in the universe and we believe that, that there could be another planet Earth, then there could be other life. And, yeah. and, and listen, I'm, I'm saying these things from a very rational standpoint. Like if you look at the tea leaves, but I think, you know, there's this overwhelming desire in, a, in Logan. It's something I say every episode. I think there's an overwhelming desire to have power. And I think in the end, we will fuck this up, this thing called Earth. It will get fucked up, whether it's through yeah. a, a, a tornado or some whatever it is. Yeah. We will fuck it up. Just like I've said before to people, and they're always shocked by it. I go, we will lose the Second Amendment. I said, I promise you, it will happen. I just hope it doesn't happen in my lifetime. Yeah. Because they people just find people are self-destructive they find a way to fuck up yeah and it's just it's the way of the world i don't think for any other reason guys like bill gates that have all the money in the world they want an enormous amount of power and control over you yeah and they want to they want to have that power and control for a very long time and they'll they're obviously high level people with a high level of intellect elon musk falls in but there's also a lot of people around them that are very dumb. So as these stories come out and as things kind of become unearthed and people are human at the end of the day, they get caught up in stuff. Yeah. I, I, I think Bill Gates has an ego as big as Las Vegas. And I think he, you know, in his mind, he does nothing wrong. Oh, I think he thinks he's a good guy. Uh, I, I bet you, well, isn't that the classic? Every villain thinks they're the good guy in the story. Um, and I would say Bill probably, he, he's so smart, 
that he thinks he knows what's better for everybody yeah. else. And uh, I could definitely see us losing the Second Amendment. I mean, you had you've had Robbie Kroger on. You know, yep. He's from South Africa and a uh, good buddy of mine. And we were talking how they like piece by piece mm. basically regulated people out of guns over there. Like you can own a gun. It's certain guns, but you have to qualify with it so often. You have to pay. Sounds these. familiar. Yeah. I mean, and, and that's what I, I see. I mean, we're headed in that route because actually. Well, a lot of it has to do with we fight for the wrong things and the national talking points are all wrong. Yeah. And I've said that many, 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 many times on this show uh, to the point where I don't think my audience wants to hear it anymore. <laughs> Uh, we get it tremendously wrong yeah. when it comes to firearms. There's a lot of reasons for that. It's the national media doesn't quite understand guns, but well, the I got I, forever. I was a member of the NRA, right? Um, and then one day, I mean, because I get all the the freaking annoying phone calls all the time. Mm. Donate money, donate money. And then I found out that Wayne Lapierre was making like six hundred thousand oh, yeah. dollars a year. It was like huge money, and he goes on some. And, and I guess I I shouldn't judge a man on his firearm skills because i'm no like operator but um you know he went on that hunt and was yeah was, I, I don't i don't think he's ever done a mag dump no, <laughs> let's, no. Just that way. <laughs> yeah. I, let's just say i don't uh, yeah but he, he like what did he shoot he had to shoot the thing like six times or something i can't remember how many times but it looks like he had never even handled a firearm but it just man it, it pissed me off when i found out he was getting paid and i'm not saying man you shouldn't make good money i you work hard, get paid for your living, but if you need $25 from me, you're calling me every day to get $25 donation, but you're paying this other guy $600,000? I kind of... I, yeah, I got to be real careful how I put this. So, so people have to understand, one of the things the right gets incredibly wrong is... If you go to the bigger orgs, I'm not going to name one. I have friends at all of them. Yeah. A lot of it is patronage, you know, a lot of patronage. And I get that. Uh, a lot of people's nephews and their cousins the and system. yeah, the buddy system are working at these places. And I, I've banged my head against the wall trying to talk to some of them and trying to get through to them and get them to understand. Uh, they don't value media like we don't value media like the left does. Yeah. And yeah. that's that's really clear. Let's well, just yeah, leave it at that. We well, don't. That's how I, I would say. That's how we got in the position we're in. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, the media. Like, if you were valued optics, you would not have Wayne Lapierre in charge. Yeah, yeah. Well, that, that's. I it it. I'll pulled, say that it pulled me away, and I mean, look, we need all the, the things we got fighting for our Second Amendment. Like, I, I would go that to that point, but uh, you know, I saw like I think even old. People can say what they want to about the guy, but um, I love old Ted Nugent. And I, Uncle Ted? Uncle Ted, man. I, I love Ted, but he, I think he even pulled out from the NRA. Well, if you, if you want to know, and I have deep thoughts on this, and the audience has heard it a hundred times, it, 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 that's why you know, I'm kind of, I, I don't want to regurgitate the same stuff back to my people, but I will say this. I think that the national leadership NSSF, NRA, all these different orgs, magazines, the rags, they weren't left with much when Ackerman McQueen left the NRA, which yeah. was their marketing agent. They essentially were left with very few spokespeople of any worth. You had, you know, guys like uh, uh, Cat Scratch Fever, Ted Nugent, God bless him, you know, he's still willing to get out there. You had, you had uh, Colleen Noir, you had the Dana Locious. Yeah. The problem is, and it trickles up to the national narrative, is none of those people work in the gun industry. They're gun advocates. They don't really understand the mechanisms and the movements, and yeah. they're your spokespeople, and they're out there talking. Uh, they, you know, they, they, they don't know all that goes into it, the families, the FFLs, the, the, like you understand farming. And there's you're never going to be that great at explaining it or breaking it down if you don't come from that side of it. Well, That's why just, don't they have that? They don't have that because they want something that fits a mold. Yeah. Okay. Ted Nugent was considered like that celebrity mold because he was on a couple shows. Uh, Collio Noir fit a mold for a particular community that he spoke to, or at least they yeah. thought he spoke to till now. You know, a lot of people are, are, are speaking out. Yeah. You know, I, I just, I, I, 
I just, you know, Dana is a radio show. She's a female. I said it on this show many times. So I'll say it again. I've never seen her shoot a gun. I don't know that she can. I've never seen a picture of it. If someone finds one, I'll give them a hundred bucks. <laughs> I've said that a hundred times. You can find yeah. one. I've never seen it. But I, I think that they create a lot of these entities and then they give them these platforms. Okay. Yeah. They get on these platforms. I've had Buck Sexton on the show and I've said it right to him and he sits on the same platform as her. Uh, I, you know, I, I don't get it. Yeah, I truly don't get. I, they could explain it to me. They're welcome on the show. Any one of them, anytime. I I don't necessarily understand. It. I think people work hard to get the microphone. I think that's the case. But I think it's time now for a lot of the leadership to step up in these communities. I'd like to see more owners of gun companies. I've talked about this very openly with Tom Tom Taylor at Six Hour. I'd like to see more brands take a more prominent role in how they market and the message that they correct they 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 put out there. They they create, and I'd love to see them get behind good folks like your self and folks that are out there that are actually living the life and doing it yeah well man hey i'll tell you uh farmers are we're pretty pretty good fans of our firearms so mm. i know i know quite a few i mean you got a impressive spread here i know some with some pretty ins- i appreciate that like uh night vision and that stuff because we got hogs now that have kind of come into our area dude it, it we're gonna get you some pulsar thermals dude that's that's what the some guys are running some. I think, hell, man. I mean, five thousand dollar scopes. They're spending stuff. money. Yeah, I mean, we are we're strong advocates for the firearms for the most part, and even the the ones that I know that are Democrats, most of them are riding around with a gun in the truck. Yeah, I mean, that's just we've over politicized the gun issue a little bit much and i yeah. think we should reel back on that a little bit because we have so many new gun owners yeah i think it has to be strategic i think we should roll back a little bit on some of that I, I, yes we want people to advocate the cause yes we want people to support we want people to kick in money but i think people have to understand too that you can't you you can't indoctrinate people that way yeah it's a bit aggressive you know day one not everybody's ready you know to go grapple with a ufc fighter day (laughs) one not everybody's ready to to do that type of thing so i think people have to understand a little bit kind of where we're at and where our customer base is and that's always been a struggle for the industry to identify who are our customers yeah you know and i've said that for a long time you know i've sat in meetings where they're like you know we want to make a a sniper rifle i'm like great so we're gonna sell that to like one person every year they're like no what do you mean we're gonna sell to everybody i'm like well then is your customer base all gonna shoot long right i I don't understand so it's it's peeling into those arguments that we've heard a hundred times in back boardrooms and everything else yeah and you know it's harder to change everybody to drink just water than it is to say we're going to produce water milk cheese bread yeah and i think people have to understand that you know they have to understand the things that these marketing entities do and what they try to do and how they try to push you and i don't think people fully understand that uh i i I know that farmers are huge advocates of of hunting and outdoors and everything else that goes lockstep with everything that they do for some reason or another the gun industry has a hard time like identifying that they want to put you in a box you're tactical or you're a hunter yeah and And that's where they want to live yeah you know? Well, and, and man, uh, like I said, m- a lot of farmers, we would fall kind of in the middle of that spectrum. Um, cause we, and no one speaks to you. No, you know what no. I mean? Yeah. And I don't know if it's because on the glow or the. And some of this conversation may go over some people's heads, but I think, I think Logan knows what I'm talking about. Yeah. It's the messaging. I've tried to explain to a lot of these brands over and over and over again. Even me hosting that UFC range day you still get brands that are like what why like it doesn't matter what and i'm like they're all new gun owners they all want to shoot they all own firearms no one has ever spoken to them yeah yeah well if if you want to change well like i mean we said it if you want to if you want to change you got to be the change the old cliche man you want to see it there's people that are deathly afraid of guns and they've never been around a gun. They've only seen the thing where it's like... The perception. The perception of it. They've seen the the great movies of... Um, and they are great classics. Uh, Predator and Rambo. <laughs> and, you know, they're dudes shooting belt feds and everything. And, and, I mean, like, I'm so America, my view, that I think I should be able to buy a belt-fed machine gun at a grocery store. Like, I should be able to walk in and get one. Um, so... That's kind of my Second Amendment thing, but 
um with farmers man we're see i'm an advocate of the i'm okay with the permit process yeah i just want to say that i'm I'm okay with the perma pro. I think everybody should have should have uh, a constitutional carry. Yeah, if that's what you're referring to, I've said it many times on this show. But I'm okay with a permitted process for CCW and and, and machine guns, things like that. But you can't say if you know we're not going to allow it at all. Yeah. The reason I'm a fan of it, I've, I have to be clear about it because people will chew me up. Is I'm a fan of the instructors. I think everybody should. Go and, 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 and see instruction on some level. Yeah. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't to exercise the, you should to exercise the right. Yeah. What I'm saying is if you are going to conceal carry and you're going to ratchet up your personal safety and that's why you're doing it for all lawful purposes and you want to be a machine, I want the trainers to make money too. I think there's yeah. a cycle there. I think they should make a buck. Yeah, for sure. And everybody should get through the class. It's kind of like if you hang around long enough, you'll get a black belt. Yeah. Yeah, well, it doesn't mean you're a you're a world champion. It's uh, it's gotten. I mean, I've actually recently. I mean, I'm not afraid to say it. I've ordered a suppressor, and um, oh. like you know, the oh. I had to go through that. The, I'm waiting now the six or eight month long process. Right. Yeah, like waiting on the suppressor to get there, and I think it's. I mean, I think it's silly that I have to have a stage or a class two or whatever stamp. And then on a machine gun aspect, I mean, I, I'm with you, man. I, I get it. I get what you're saying. But, like, I'm... I'm not saying it from the standpoint of restricting anyone. Yeah. That's no, not... Just, they need to be trained. You know, and I'm just saying, if you want to go buy, like, an M60 or whatever, or a freaking tank, I just think that there's great folks out there that train people and instruct, and they're very readily accessible, and there's a lot of people that are really good at it. I like to see money flow, because money's going to flow one way or the other, guys. Yeah. I like to see money flow through those guys. Hey, you know, if you want a green permit, which is a machine gun permit, most people don't know that. You have to have a green permit. You can possess a machine gun in some states if you have a, cre a green permit and it falls. 20 grand yeah. to buy the gun. They're 20 grand to buy the gun. <laughs> if it falls under the parameters, whether they call it a marketing sample or a predated gun or any of those things. But I also love the idea of instructors and people that I love in the community having a pipeline to yeah. generate money. Yeah. And I'm, I'm that's. That is solid to me, man. Like I said, I have no issue with that. But I've been around the guy. See, I can present a solution like that, Logan, because I've been around and been in the field with these guys. Yeah. And I get it. I know what they want. I know what makes sense. I think there's a solution that works for both. Do I think every state should have constitutional carry? Absolutely. Yeah. What does constitutional carry look like in every state? I get it. We don't want gun industry advocates don't necessarily want people walking around outside carry with an AR strapped to their back. That's not good civilization practices. That's not necessarily ideal. And that's not smart. Uh, I've always said if I was a bad guy and I walk in, because, man, I mean, in Tennessee, we're constitutional carry now. It, it finally got passed. And I've seen the dudes that come in. I mean, I got my cowboy boots if on you, today. If your duty requires that, I get yeah, it. Yeah, but this will be a guy, and he's just got a freaking forty four Magnum. He's got this Harry <laughs> Callahan on his hip over there. And he's just standing there and thinks he's, you know, chest kind of puffed out. And I'm like, man, if I was a bad guy. You'd be the first one you'd dead. You'd be the first one I'd shoot. <laughs> and then, or if I'm the good guy in there and the bad guy comes in and shoots you, I'm going to pull out a little bitty 9 millimeter that I had concealed, <laughs> and I'm going to shoot him. Like, you're going to be dead with this cannon on your hip. Well, because you're already announcing the threat level. Yeah. That's that's the problem in the psychology. And I've sat, as you know, with a lot of fucking tactical guys. Yeah. You're, when you announce the threat level, if I walk in a room and I have this, and I say, what's up, Logan? You're instantly going to have a <laughs> posture. Yeah. And, and you're going to have a, 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 a reaction to that yeah. in some way, shape, or form. So I think people don't understand there's making a political statement, which I totally understand. And then there's making a, a sociological statement, which I totally understand. And at times, yes, that's, that's required. But at the same time, we know it's a security guard when they have security on there. Sure. Yeah. We know it's a law enforcement officer when they have a duty belt, a badge, and an ID. We know what we're looking at. Yeah. So you have to be very careful with the optics of that. I've always been, you know, I like lower visibility. I think that makes sense given I'm a bigger guy. I think people, you know, I'm the first one they, they want to come after in some ways. I think that comes along with it. And that's yeah. a responsibility uh, that we all have, right? Yeah. You're, you know, you get it. Um, instantly, you're going to size up the room, you know, for, yeah. for threats. Well, that's what it was. One of the weirdest things to me coming out here, because as I was telling you before we got on the air, 
First time for me coming to Vegas. I'm sixteen hundred miles away from my home. Uh oh. I feel very out naked of my and own. afraid. And I have no knives. I usually carry I mean, I'm dropping my EDC. Not that I'm like I don't claim to be like some like I said, I'm no operator, but I I try to always be prepared. Be more capable. Yeah. I, I have no knives on me. I usually carry a fixed and a, a pocket. And uh I and I mean, I'm I get it. That's carried. one of the things that made Batman cool. He had a solution on his belt for everything. Yeah. Yeah, man. And, and like, so I have none of that. I told my wife, I said, I have never felt more naked in my life. I don't even have my truck keys. Mm -hmm. I've got keys to like a little Ford Eco Fusion something that I'm driving. I've never been in something like that in my life. So I'm in like a, a new world. Yeah. But it's fun. I, I tell you, man, this is the, this is something I wanted to hit on. I know we've hit on some. Uh, some bad sides of things, but one of the really cool things to me, um, as I've said before, I'm I'm a farmer. That's what we you know. That's how we greeted each other when I came in. I know. It's the first conversation, the first thing you said. Yeah, and and Scott has gotten on to me before. Scott actually told me he's like, dude, you're not just a farmer. You're not. He was like, you're not just a farmer, because that's what I always you said. Say, man, I'm I'm just a farmer. Um, like downplaying it and i mean because i i run a podcast called living fully loaded that's kind of how me and you have linked up and so i think you play dumb really well do it i think that's a good quality <laughs> though i think that's a good quality yeah. i think i think you can kind of read the room that way and that's yeah. why you you know and i'm not saying you say anything dumb i'm just saying you you like to break the ice that way and i think it's i think it's good for you because it helps you read the room yeah yeah, it kind of lets me. I can figure out who I'm dealing with. In yeah, a lot of ways. I get it. Um, because I, I mean, I, I like people in general. I, I do enjoy people. You're disarming. Part. This is guys. I don't have a psychi psychology degree. Your disarming technique of people is I'm just a farmer. You know, <laughs> I don't disarm people. I arm them because I want to see their worst first. Yeah. So did I? Was I disarming when I came in? Yeah, you're great. Well, uh, it works. Well. Well, I appreciate that, man. But what I was getting at, though, is pretty wild to me. This is, I guess, if there's an inspiring thing I would want to say. Um, I am a farmer in West Tennessee, and now I'm sitting here in Las Vegas at your studio. Fish out of water. Dude, if, I had, if you had asked me two years ago, will you be... Man, would you ever go on a show in Vegas and be be on a pod a, a big podcast? Have cameras all there? There ain't a chance in the world. No I chance. Thought that. Like this is something that I just in a rural small town where I grew up or where I live um, live my whole life. These are things that are just people. It's foreign. Even me starting my podcast, people think it's like crazy to do something like that. But I think it's a mission too. I think yeah. it's something that burns in your soul a little. And I tell people all this. As you get older, life really boils down to how cool your deathbed conversation is or how cool your dining room table conversation is. Yeah. There's a lot of other things. Don't get me wrong. You might raise a family. You may have a family. But we say, we say from dust, we return to dust, right? Yeah. So if we believe in that, at the two most pivot at the most pivotal points in your life, it's always going to be the story that you tell. And if you're Ted Bundy, that's not a great story, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. But people have a thirst for the extremes. Yeah. That's the extreme. That might be the worst story, right? Maybe Jeffrey Dahmer. Take your pick. But there are <laughs> terrible stories out there. Yeah. If you live in the middle, no one will remember your name. Yeah. I notice some people, they may take that as like, uh, but some people are after some level of notoriety. Now, if you would ask me three years ago that I'd be sitting here interviewing you, I'd have told you the same thing. No, you're crazy. Yeah. I'm serious. I would have told you you're crazy. Life has a way of showing you paths. Okay. And as you see those paths, you make choices. Your path and your choices are going to dictate the results. Okay. Yeah. And luck is a marriage of hard work, discipline, and having a little bit of the magic that is luck injected into it. Yeah. But when you go down these paths, what I've learned, it's important to embrace them. And I do believe in this. There's, there's a, there's a time for everything. Yeah. Okay. And I guess you could say this is 
maybe another backdoor biblical reference, but there's a time for everything. There's a time to grow. There's a time to advocate. There's a time to work. There's a time to put your head down. Uh, there's a time to develop knowledge and understanding, and there's a time to dispense knowledge. Yeah. And I think people have to understand where all those things fit. Serendipitously for me, these things all, all kind of coalesced around a podcast. If you knew me, I like to talk. So I was like, I'll do something that has me talking, you know, and that's cool. That That's pretty much what happened to me. I, I was always kind of, what do they call it? The, the gift of gab, as mm. they call it. And um, I don't think necessarily that I like, I, I think I like relationships more than anything. Yeah, I, I have always uh, had a desire to, talk to be to talk and be surrounded by fascinating people that was something that i've always been drawn to even in the farming world in a lot of ways i i've always kind of felt a little bit of an Mm. outsider in that because a lot of guys they become a farmer and it's not i don't say this necessarily as a bad thing but they all they ever will be is a farmer and that is their entire identity is wrapped up in being a farmer like they they don't even when they leave the house they leave the house good and to the farm. and there's a closed offness to that and and look we see it even in our industry and media there are people that still want to go and and it's because maybe they need a job they want to work at a magazine we all know magazines are toast we all know newspapers are toast yeah and that stuff's not going to last and in 10 years there's going to be even a smaller magazine rack which makes me sad so yeah no no i i get it i mean you can have your opinions on i used to love flipping through the newspaper don't get me wrong yeah But I think there's an an unwillingness to accept the change that's coming. So the old timers will always say, oh, that's not going to be a thing. Oh, fuck that. You know, I still have people I sit in meetings. They're like, TikTok is not a good way to do it. And I'm like, it's there. It's no, (laughs) you you ain't stopping it. It's like saying, I'm not going to eat one of those cookies in the cookie tray. They're going to be there no matter what. You may not eat one, but it's going to be there. See, you're you're on a something that i've thought a lot about because i feel like in a lot of ways farmers are kind of like i feel like we're kind of that last line of the old guard Ooh. um mm. because i mean i'm 30 so i'm i'm a young guy in the game but my values and and the way i see things still very much line up with the old because farming is moving the way of commercial like commercialized like that's that's where they want to take it. The big goal is to make farming, like in cattle, there's four main beef processors like globally. They pretty much control the prices of everything. It's just four of them. And I mean, they're taking beef, they mix it with like Brazilian beef and stuff. Like what you're getting at the store um, is usually not, not near the quality you're gonna get from your local guy. And the processors are slammed because of this. But you can take, and I guess I'm getting off on a beat. No, tangent. no, because a lot of it has to do with sourcing. Yeah, yeah, like you can go get, I mean, I had a person come up to me one time. And they're like, when are you going to start selling cattle? Mm. I want you to start processing beef. And I said, never. I will never get into it enough. Like I have a small herd of my own. You could do small batches. Yeah, yeah. and like at one time we ran 300 head of cattle. Like mm-hmm. we were pretty big in the cattle. And then we got into row crop. Row crop's a lot better because I don't. We don't get woke up at one o'clock in the morning because mm. cows are out and we have to go fix barbed bar fences. But uh, they said I want you to start doing it because the meat is going to get so expensive at the grocery store. Just can't hardly afford it. And I got to thinking about that later, and I was like, you know, I mean, I what I'm nice to them. I said, I oh, know, you know, I've I've had my share of the big herd. We mm. had mean cows. I've said this many times. There's two different kinds of, I guess, three. You've got nice cows, which are friendly and go out and pet them. Right. You got wild cows, which when you walk in the pasture, they run away. And then you got mean cows, and that's what we had. And those are the ones you walk in the pasture and they run at you. Yes. So those were what I grew up around. And I, after that, I was like, I, I don't want to mess with these things. Mm. But um, it's just like anything American made. Buying the meat direct from the farmer is not going to be cheaper than buying it at the grocery store but it is it's a much higher quality Mm. like you could take that beef from american local farmer and you could put it in the fridge and it's going to stay red be pretty and it's going to taste good and then you have that other like kind of gray you know the weird color Mm -hmm. of them at the store Mm -hmm. there's a reason they mix them there's a it's it's like i think it's brazil they 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 like cut some of the american beef with brazilian beef 
So you're not getting like pure American beef at the grocery store most of the time. Um, but it, it just, I don't it, It's just with everything, man, if, if we want to see some stuff, I, I just urge people support, support the local but mm. i actually really urge to support the small guys because they're the ones that are drying up right now big time i i got a chance to to spend meet a guy who supplied like three or four local restaurants sounds similar to like what you're getting at in terms of beef yeah he said the same exact things as you and this was back in new hampshire he goes look i have some cattle I supply three or four r- restaurants in a small meat house. Yeah. You know, and a lot of times you see guys that they'll dabble in that. He, you know, he'll be like, you know, if I get some good cuts and I get some stuff, I'll, I'll, I'll put it out there. And he goes typically, you know, two or three. And I got a chance to meet him because I was having dinner at a restaurant. And I remember he goes, you want to meet the guy that actually cuts my meat? And I thought he was fucking with me. I go, yeah, sure. Bring him <laughs> over. And he, and he brought him over. He goes, happened to be there eating. And we got to talking about that exact topic that you just touched on. And he's like, I go, why don't you do it for like fucking Wendy's or something? You know? And he's like, first of all, they don't even use meat. He goes, second <laughs> yeah. of all, he goes, you just find that it's a lot easier to do kind of like a private yeah. you know, hurting and just kind of do it that way. And I think he had certain restrictions and guidelines. He had to operate within that state in that particular way, but he was, it was considered almost like you can sell so many guns or cars a year. Like it was considered like a private sale thing. Yeah. There, there's a ton of, especially in Tennessee, there's a lot of regulation on like, you can't, I can't just process a cow and then sell the beef. Right. There's a, you actually have to have a USDA inspector on site you got to have a facility. It's pretty – like, the normal guy can't do right. it. Right. Like, you just can't – you can't have – you have to have somebody literally on staff to check the quality. And I get it. You know, we want to have the high-quality standards. But that's made it where – it's it's just made it really hard to process uh, right. beef. And the processors that are there are slammed because people are wanting to get mm. beef now with COVID. But I don't know, man. Farmers, we're uh, – I do, like I said, I feel like in a lot of ways we're kind of the the old guards. Even the the younger, even guys younger than me that come into them, typically they have kind of the same old school values. And uh, it always fascinates me when people are fascinated that I'm a farmer. I'm always well. Hopefully, you'll take them into a new direction. Yeah, a little bit more, more, a little more advocacy, a little more ch- talking, and hopefully you'll get more and more farmers on your podcast that can talk about it and talk about some of the pains that they go through because there's there's advocacy in that. Well, it's such a misconception, and yeah. I, I think coming on here helps. Um, I hope you know, so. You know, talking like people think farmers, they do think we're lining our pockets. There's an old commercial that used to come on um, the guy because they see some of the stuff we have. The guy is on a, a lawnmower, like this big fancy house, mm. and he's mowing the yard, and he's smiling real big, and he says, I just put in a brand new swimming pool. Mm. I'm a member of the country club, and he's smiling the whole time, and he said, how did I do it? I'm in debt up to my eyeballs, and he's like smiling the whole time, and like, dude, that's farming to a T. Like, yeah. We, I don't, we don't have huge capital, most of us. We just operate in very heavy debt. <laughs> like yeah. That. No, I got, I, I totally get it. I, it makes sense to me. Yeah. It does make sense to me. It's a thankless task and it's Yulman's work for sure. And I have no doubt about that. I'm not, I'm not doing that. And I, I don't plan <laughs> on doing to, it. No, you gotta, I know you said that you don't like to get out too much. I don't much, like to do anything anymore. But you, you gotta get out to Tennessee and we'll put you on a tractor. Yeah. No. <laughs> you, you know what it is I, I i i like the idea of if you're good at what you do be good at it and get paid doing it yeah i love going out and doing and new experiences the reality is my field days as i like to say are few and far between and i have to pick my opportunities it doesn't mean i'm saying no it just yeah. means i pick and choose my my moments i operate on percentages logan it's not my percentage graph anymore. Like people say to me, like, you know, I was talking about this last night with a friend and he, he's actually a super accomplished mill guy and, and Leo guy. And he, I said, I said, the days of me like running into the burning bill, I'm like, I'm at the end, dude. Like, you don't want me. I'm not Gerard Butler. And, and you know what I mean? That's, that's for the movies. And it's, it's not to say if you're in a stressful or impactful situation, you're not going to rise up. It's just yeah. my moments are few and far between. 
yeah. I got a lot going on in my life and, and I'm at the point in life where, uh, you know, I have to operate on percentages. Well, you pick your battles. It's man. got, yeah, it's gotta be in my percentage graph. Like, you know, I, I don't run around with cartels. It's not my percentage graph. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's how yeah. I see it. It doesn't mean I'm opposed to a great experience. Yeah. Well, that's what, uh, with farmers too, in hand like that, uh, one thing I was going to say, and I guess it's part of the politicizing of everything. Cause now used to, I feel like most people kind of supported farmers, but, uh, when Trump won, I actually saw a guy online say that he hoped all of us went broke, it's uh, terrible. all the farmers. And I mean, I actually, I laughed at that. Cause I was like, you do realize like a very large portion of the products that you consume, be it clothing, food, all these things. If all of us went broke and there was no more farmers, you wouldn't have that stuff. And and that's not saying it from like on a high horse. That's just saying being real. I agree. Like I, it, I agree with you. That's so this, this age of politicizing everything is just, it's annoying as hell. Like I don't care. Like what you said, I don't care if somebody's a Democrat. I don't care if somebody's a Republican. Like, don't attack me for my views and I won't attack you for your views. I, I agree with that a hundred percent. I think, I think there has to be open dialogue. Yeah. And I, but I think you have to have the people that, that have the strength to engage in that dialogue and engage in it properly. Yeah. I've said it many times. One of the, the biggest things that I know we're getting close on time guys. Uh, one of the biggest things I've said a hundred times at the national level you can't engage in dialogue with people when you're just going to say AR-15 stands for armor light rifle. Yeah. You know, it, it, you lost them. Yeah. That's not healthy discord. Yeah. You, you, you can't, they're not prepared to have the conversation. It's like, think of it like this. When someone dies, sometimes people are prepared to uh. confront that and they're willing to have the conversation and they're willing yeah. to, 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 to dig into that emotion. Some people are not willing to dig into that emotion. It takes time, healing, and, and certain things that they have to go through. That's why some people, funerals just aren't for them. Yeah. For some people, remembrances just aren't for them. And there's deep-rooted psychology behind that, and there's a lot of reasons. It's the same with any topic that people are passionate enough to stand out in the cold about. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. So you have to get to them in a different way. I like the way guys like Jordan Peterson approach it. Yeah. I like the way uh, podcasting approaches it by having a car. Hey, are you willing to come on and have a conversation? Yeah. And it has to start there. Going out and screaming it at the, the church steps, I don't know that you're going to win people over. Yeah. Well, that's... Uh, and I... I'm trying to think of like a easy way to put this but kind of with like the riots that mm -hmm. you've seen um and i've heard people be like man nobody's listening that's the only way they could get their message across in a lot of ways that hardened people against what it it just hardened the people that were already against them that much more right by doing those kind of things and so i that's one of the problems i see and well i think every, everybody's sitting around saying saying why do you have to steal and loot yeah. yeah. I don't think, I, I think what a lot of it has to do with is a lot of us are sitting back like three years ago, you'd have done prison for this. Yeah. Now it's okay. Somebody burned the Fox News Christmas tree. Like I'm sitting here saying like, am I missing out? Should I be like going and hitting Gucci tonight? <laughs> like, yeah. Like, am I missing something? That's where the disconnect is. Like, we're all kind of trying to process that. Like, why? Like, I want to, like, sit with someone from CNN and say, why is that okay now? Yeah. Why is that adjusting the spectrum? What good is coming out of that? Yeah. You know, so I don't understand it. But what's funny about it is the companies are willing to just eat it. Oh, yeah. That's man. what's crazy. That's, that is what's Insurance wild. companies everywhere are probably freaking out. Well, then I've heard people be like, man, they got insurance. Quit worrying about and it. And then they'll just raise premiums. Yeah. And Which then it... it it kills me when people are like, man, they got insurance. Yeah. I'm like, well, just quit being a dirt bag. Like, <laughs> like that's with, and that goes, I feel like this goes hand in hand with everything. If whatever you're trying to do, um, I, I really believe if you are good to people, then typically good follows. Mostly peaceful protests. Yes. Mostly, mostly peaceful. peaceful. Mostly peaceful. Mostly peaceful. <laughs> well, listen, we're going, we're long. We're already an hour and 20 and, uh, let everybody know where they can find you, how they can reach you, and how they can get in touch. Uh, man, they can. Uh, I'm on Instagram. That's probably where I'm the most active. It's uh, at lo dot Hanks. So pretty, pretty easy. Um, I host. I actually host two podcasts. Um, Living fully loaded uh, is my 
solo podcast and it's kind of i'm gonna have you on it just a minute and then, uh, a lot of people like that have had scott valcourson on and uh quite a few brandon lily and then we talk. love brandon oh yeah man and then uh talk dirt to me is my second one me and my cousin host it and it is all about agriculture i like that and farming and we're we try to we disrupt a lot of the myths and stuff so if somebody has really enjoyed the farming aspect i encourage you to check i got it some out. people that are talking about it. rk is saying he's got a tree he's got eight acres so I people yeah, yeah. hey man you can start small man that's the, i encourage people start small yeah. um but i'm yeah. sure he'll be reaching out and probably have questions yeah i'd love to hear from you well listen i love having you it means the world i'm glad you like it in here too but it means the world having you it is it's awesome and, and like i said man i'm super honored to be on the show no no it's my pleasure and uh i want to thank everybody who listened appreciate you guys appreciate everybody who liked and subscribed guys tap thumbs up share this can't get this message out any other way need your help and support logan needs your help and support go check out all his stuff i know the links have been shared in here we'll share them uh underneath the podcast uh guys go support him you know plain and simple how do you not support a guy like this any way that you can you get any merch you got merch on the websites and everything man i did I, that shirt i brought you but i actually don't have it for sale right well now. we got to get you more merch so that's something we'll work on uh everybody out there guys remember to like and subscribe go check out all the sponsors i want to say a few of them now gala technologies rhino metals galco leather holsters pulsar thermal imaging technology right on optics big shout out to them i know they support yep. you brady those guys great guys yep. right on awesome. go check out six hour Go check out Volkortsen. You mentioned Scott a couple times, too. Great uh, super shout out to Scott and his podcast, Brady's as well. Appreciate all you guys, everybody that supports the show. Go check out Kenzie's Optics. I know they were in town this week. Shout out to Keith and Katie. Great company. If you guys get a chance, go check out Kenzie's. Appreciate all you guys. I'm going on Logan's show. And then later today, we're going to have Max Griffin on. So stay tuned. Continue to like and subscribe. Appreciate you guys. We're going to head out.